Hi there, Audra Slinky here. I just wanted to show you a really cool post that came in our Stagers Connect group from Angie Creech. Actually, Angie, I am in this photo. This is a photo of us at the last Risa convention, the live Risa convention in 2019. I'm in the yellow and Angie is to my right, the blondie right in the middle. And she is an amazing stager and she's an amazing share in our Stagers Connect group. And here in our Stagers Connect group, she just did a post post that said, hey, I just was informed that the realtor, that there are now multiple offers, including a full asking price, cash offer, and a bidding war is in place. Wow. On the home that she staged. I'm going to show you the photos. You won't believe it. She started Wednesday at 1230. It's a 4,600 square foot home. And she just finished yesterday evening. <laughs> the realtor texted that two people stopped by for showings by two. The sellers accepted an offer. It wasn't even on the market for 24 hours. Wowza. How many of you can totally relate to this? The market is going totally crazy right now. Stagers everywhere are busier than ever, which is so cool. And they're seeing these homes just getting multiple offers, best prices because they're staged. And that is the difference. It's a beautiful home, lots of extra space, could have easily confused the buyers. I'm going to show you the photos and you'll see what I mean. And this is why the realtor was super smart. She wanted Angie to come in and define each of the rooms, each little niche. There's a lot of different little confusing areas in this home. So that's exactly what she did. The Fast and Furious stage, 100% successful, loving what she does. So super cool. Before we get into the photos, I got to show you, this is the beauty of our lovely Stagers Connect group, which if you don't know, anyone who joins my staging and design certification program gets kind of a private invite into this group. And we are like, we are just we just love on each other, basically. So she puts this down and she gets, you know, within a matter of just a few days, 88 comments, just beautiful, gorgeous, love it. I mean, you cannot believe, I mean, all sorts of emojis and high fives and just like, so it's just, that's the stuff that is so important, I think, in our industry. And that's why we have this group to encourage and inspire one another. And this is why Angie takes the time to post all these things. And that is because it's hard to be an island in this industry. And it's so important that you work and connect with other stagers. And even if you can't do it locally, because I know a lot of you are in rural areas, that's why these kind of groups are so important. And the rule that I have in this group is we never tear down. We only build each other up. And as you can see, these 88 comments, I love the Sherry, you know, did the brilliant Brilliantly well done, Simon. But you can see all of these sweet, wonderful people just giving her the huge woot woot, which of course I did too. Um, and and it's just this that reinforcement that she is just doing everything right. And in fact, if I had scrolled down, if I showed you what Stagers Connect looks like right now, and I won't because it's private, I'm keeping things private, um, I had Angie's permission to share this you would see a ton of stories like this, number one, and also a lot of posts of people who are just getting started into staging saying, hey guys, I'm working on my portfolio. What do you think of my photos? And everybody just reinforcing, giving them great um, high fives and also wonderful constructive criticism because this group is not only filled with new people. It's filled with a lot, a lot, a lot of veteran stagers who put a lot of wonderful time, what I, which I really appreciate, into building up other stagers. So let's take a look at these homes and let's pull out some design tips, ideas, and what have you from the way she approaches home. You should know, and this is one thing I do talk to people, if you're worried about getting into staging because you think, you need to have massive inventory for a 4,600 square foot home, you know, which is what she just did. You don't. One of the things that my training walks you through is the fact that you work, connect with the furniture rental companies in your area first for the large pieces, which is what Angie did. Granted, it's much, you know, you make more money being the furniture rental company, but I always say in the beginning, cut your teeth, get used to it before you know, you may not want to just handle vacant homes, right? You may want to do just design or you may want to do occupied staging. There's so many different ways you can grow your business in this industry. So I always say, don't invest too much. Yeah, you don't know if this is your passion yet, the vacant staging, um, because I have some people that's just all they want to do. And then other people, all they want to do is occupied staging, staging or colors or design. So just so you know that. So let's take a look and do know that she pulled, she was constrained to the furniture from the furniture rental company. 
All right, so here we are. She's just entering in. Beautiful staircase. Um, she didn't leave an entryway blank. That's really smart. She followed my rule, kind of art of arrangement. You go low, medium, high, and she just kept it simple, but it works. Uh, she didn't just leave a chair with nothing. She kind of put the pillow in, kind of cute, and then she connected the art. And one of the things I train in my training in one of the design modules is a design principle called rhythm. And rhythm is the is that string, if you will, that thread that you're going to thread throughout every room of the home. And I think you can already tell what her color is for the rhythm of this home. She is sticking with kind of the turquoise pale blues. And I kind of love that because she connects it throughout the home. She doesn't get wacky. It's it's called rhythm. It's a design principle and kind of design 101, which I walk people through. And of course, really typical of stagers, a lot of different whites. That's always good. This looks like Sagebrook Home, which is one of the vendors I highly recommend. It only sells to trade, gives us huge discounts as stagers, and that is in my um, how to shop trade section in my training. Here she actually did, obviously this room is off the entry, kept it really clean. She's sticking with the blue, you know, theme, but very subtly, that's the point with staging, you don't need to get crazy. She's got her art hung, you know, perfectly at the distance over this lovely um, curio. Um, made it look like, especially now um, in this COVID kind of timing, uh, a lot of things have changed. A lot of people are working remote. So it's really important in a home like this to stage an office. Whether they use one or not, it's important that she staged that. And she did in a downstairs room. Now walking through, I thought she was really clever. Now these, this photo isn't as big because she took it lengthwise, but you'll see that there's some bigger ones. I'm not a fan of the flooring. And you wouldn't have really noticed it, right? Because she was very clever in the way she always brought the eye up um, and also she uses a, the, a lot of large floor rugs and she keeps the principle of when you're using large floor rugs, the dining room, all the furniture kind of on top of it, living room, all of the legs, front legs of her furniture at least touching it. You know, those are just some design principles 101 that she kept with. Again, um, if you're not going to do the high, low, medium in arranging, this is a very symmetrical arrangement, which I love with the lamps here on either side of the art. And then just going with the threes, because anything in threes is kind of the way to go when you're arranging. She kept that simple. Huge staging trick that I know a lot of stagers use, and I know I've posted about this, is can't get cheaper than Pellegrino bottles. They just kind of pop. They've got great color. And one of the things I always recommend, too, in my training is the art of trays, especially for occupied homes, having trays for people to have these vignettes. I call them emotional connection points. That's the last step in our eight-step feel home process. Every stager that goes through my training, they approach a room in a home, eight steps in each room. And the first step is first impressions. They're just gathering them. We're asking the seller to give us what they think a buyer's first impressions are, kind of as a way to pull them away from their home, like help them to be a little objective. I know it's really hard, but we try. Um, and then we eliminate clutter and we go down those eight steps. But the last step is really the dial in. And you'll see Angie did a great job here. One thing I highly recommend if you're a stager that you do, don't just photograph your rooms. This is just, by the way, these these aren't her professional photographs. This is just her, I believe. Make sure you photograph the cute little vignettes that you create because those are really good photos to have on your website. People love to look at little vignettes. Here was a pretty large master bedroom and she wisely did not keep it to just a bed and a nightstand. And this is the difference between, you know, when if you're an agent watching this, you know, not all price proposals are equal. You know, a lower price stager would have, you know, just said, okay, I'm just going to throw a bed and one nightstand in there and get away with that. It wouldn't have looked to scale. So Angie perfectly scales this room with the right furniture. And she doesn't have to go overboard. Again, look at the rhythm and the way she has the blue and she creates this little settee. Very simply done. She's This is probably quartz furniture that she's stuck with. She makes sure she includes the dresser. Um, and some artwork over it. Bathroom, she's followed my, you know, my rule of bathrooms is just go white. People want to see white in bathrooms, so it's really simple. Just white towels, white art, white, white, um, carpet if you want. And I also love to see the different ways that stagers make beds. So using a sleigh bed is a really handy way of not having to deal with the dreaded uh, bed skirt. <laughs> if you're a stager, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can comment on that. 
Anyway, but I love the way she did the throw at the top here. Really unique. And I say if you're a stager, kind of look at the different ways stagers make their beds and be different. Make it a signature look for yourself. Um, and never, never have a shortage of pillows. That's, of course, my rule <laughs> 101. But she kept it simple, which I love. It looks beautiful. This is one of those questionable rooms that you walk in downstairs and you'd be like, what is this for? There, we already saw the formal dining room. There's a nook off the kitchen. There's another family room, great room. You're going to see it's massive. And then there's just this room. And she, I thought, created a wonderful little club chair kind of seating area that People can say, yeah, this is cool. I could almost, you know, it's like a little bar. She could have almost set it up as a bar, but she probably wisely knew her area and her buyer demographic and didn't. Um, but I thought that was pretty clever because she, she made sense out of a kind of nonsensical space in this home. Here's kind of the way she did the table setting. Cute, sweet, love it. Never leave a table blank. Again, it's a, another reason. This is like a model home look. If you ever go through model homes, they never usually leave tables blank. Why do you think the builders have this? To, the stagers know to do that, or the designers. They, these builders spend a lot of money on staging those model homes. They know a thing or two on what sells, and it's these kind of emotional connections. And again, she's using that rhythm all the way through. Love the way she styled this cute little three-tiered uh, tray in the kitchen. And again, in the kitchen, never. The, the rule that agents tell come, sometimes sellers to just clear off all their cabinets so that or their counters is such a bad idea because the kitchen is one of the number one buying rooms for a buyer. And so the kitchen gives us so many different opportunities to make buyers fall in love through these kind of emotional connection points. Look how cute. I love the creativity. First of all, these cups are adorable. And then she put little lemons inside them. And then she had little succulents at the top. She just kind of loaded it up really sweetly how you would kind of love to have this in your own home. Another thing I always tell stagers which is a great idea is everybody loves dogs right so this is obviously a corner probably in the laundry room or uh, by the mud room. She just dialed in this emotional connection point. How cute is this? This is a little emotional connection point that would fit in almost every home. So she probably does put it in every home and it's so smart because buyers go into multiple homes before they make their offers typically, right? They see these photos online and then we want those online photos to propel them to visit the home. So we know that over 95% of those buyers are online first. So they see photos, obviously room photos. When they go, we want that home to be memorable. And it's when you do cute things like this, not too weird, um, that make it memorable. Dogs, must love dogs. You cannot go wrong with dog paraphernalia. <laughs> Same thing, here's another tray. You know I'm a huge fan of that and I love how she loaded up a little coffee site and she uses, that's one of our other trade vendors, the fake food, but delicious, right? So she's she's a woman after my own heart with a sweet tooth there and the coffee thing. And of course I love just, it just adds interest uh, and it fills this corner beautifully. Well done, Angie. So here's the great room. Wow, right? I think there's another larger photo that we can look at, and I should have checked ahead of time. But again, court furniture, this is another great staging rule you should remember is when you're, we'll show it, but when you're styling for the kitchen kind of bar, island bar area, tilt the bar stools just so. And it just looks interesting that way. And it's also more inviting than just tucking them under. I think I'm going to look and see if we have a better large room photo of this. Well, here we go. This is just the setup that she did. And again, this is a huge space and a lower price stager probably would have said, I'm just going to include the couch and two club chairs. But that would not have filled this and a smaller rug. So she was brilliant. I mean, this is more expensive stuff, but look how much better it looks. Everything is to scale. It's not overdone and it fills the space beautifully. Here's some little details on the niche. I'm hoping we can go back. I'm hoping there's a back photo of, oh, here. Here's the bar stools. Here you can see the kitchen, and you can see some of the little vignettes that we've already witnessed, but you can see there's a lot more. I imagine this one, it's a picture frame that goes this way. One of the things I always tell stagers to do is to leave your mark. Leave your mark on your staging in a very beautiful, subtle way. That way it won't get 
kind of ruined. And that way, when anyone walks through, most importantly, other agents, they can be like, snap, I'm going to take a photo of that person's business card. You don't need to leave a bunch of business cards all over the entry table. That's kind of kitschy. Be clever about it. I always say it's like smart to leave your mark in the kitchen. On my blog, I have tons of great ideas on what stagers do because I share those in my training on um, creative ways, designer ways that they do leave their mark. But it's great. She set up this bar beautifully. She made it very functional. She tilted the chairs perfectly. And she was perfectly to scale on this island. What is the focal point of a kitchen? It is an island, if there is one. So you want the eyes to be drawn there. She did that beautifully. Well, here we go. You get the close-up. How cute, right? So the buyers can work through and go, home sweet home. Yeah, this is mine. And she used greenery. I bet she used some of our trade vendors that we love that looks very real, um, but not. Um, some stagers I know use a lot of real greenery. It's There's obviously extra fee for that. So if you are staging with real greenery, make sure you're charging because you have to water that on a weekly. But uh, it, you can go either way. Okay, so I'm going to go back because we didn't get to see that full room photo. We did, I wanted to kind of talk about that more. I thought there was another photo of it. So sorry, guys. Let's see. Where are we? Here we are. Okay, so we saw this setup. We saw the bars. Again, most buyers walking through, if there was nothing in these spaces up here and down here, would be like, it just would look like big gaping holes in a room, right? It just would. It would not look good. And a less priced bid, if you're an agent watching this, you won't get fill in for that. That's the point. You want to know what you're going to get. You want to make sure you always get what you pay for when it comes to furniture. So this agent was very smart, told her fill in those spaces. Okay, loving this flooring, by the way. <laughs> it's too bad. It's not throughout the whole home. Um, but she filled these spaces wonderfully. She didn't overdo it. She took out the question of where you would put the TV and I thought it was pretty clever that she put it on this side. Now that's our vendor that we have, probably Props America, because then the bar stools can watch it. It kind of makes for everyone watching it. And then she even went so far as added complete symmetry in the space by by kind of putting exact vignettes in the top here. And what does symmetry do for a buyer? This is, again, just Design 101. It, it brings peace and calm to a space. Now, sometimes as designers, we like to th make everything asymmetrical, not everything. We kind of throw things off. And that's not a bad trick either to do when you want to kind of jar someone walking through and kind of get their interest. But here, she's just kind of creating this beautiful blue oasis, peaceful space, which I love. Now, going back, here's the other view of the dining room furniture that she obviously got from court just kind of accessorized it um, and then added kind of drapery and here's the front door here looks like an upstairs large game room and I kind of thought it was really fun I mean she, again she's constrained to the furniture rental furniture but she made it fun and funky which I thought was perfect um, again the dog you cannot go wrong there it's just this is kind of a fun kids hangout game room she added interest, filled in the space, kind of a game section here, um, and even laid out, uh, it looks like a game board here, which I thought was really clever, and added this extra table, which is kind of cute because it's a large space. Again, she's filling the space so that people can imagine, you know, where they would put, how they'd store their games. Um, this is super cute. So she just filled it beautifully, I thought. Here's a here's as she's stepping back. You can really see, and there's probably a TV on the wall behind me. So she she filled this space beautifully. Nothing looks. If she did, if she had just left the couch in this again, it would have felt a little sparse. You never want it to feel that way. These are just again her photos, not professional photos. It had a movie room, and she just made it a movie room, but she dialed it even more with the cute popcorn and Coke. So smart with <laughs> with the, the chairs. Now, I imagine those are probably going with the house uh, because I don't think Court rents those, but who knows? I should have asked. Um, simple styling. Now, here's where she got very clever. She made sure that she filled in all of the blank spaces, but she, in the extra rooms, this is where she saved the seller and the agent a little bit of money. She didn't have to go crazy on those, right? Most important that you fill and completely design 
well the you know living room family family room kitchen dining room and master bedroom right let's just dial in those are the you know five rooms that everyone's going to go to first and so after that she kind of it was cute oh here's the living room again look at that just spectacular great flooring again um, but then she just filled in these cute rooms, made them good personality. Here's obviously the boys' room. I always say I recommend, kind of like a model home, pretty smart to have theme rooms, keep them simple. And she probably, this is what my stagers, I recommend them do. You have these theme materials just all in a bin. So if you, you need to do your boys' room, done. Um, if you need to do your girls' room, done. Oh, here she did a bathroom, just really simply done. Again, in white, highly recommend. Here's her girls' room. No, girls' rooms are a little bit more fun to stage and you can see she did it really cute with a little fur a little art I mean what girl's not gonna love or dream of just being in that space and then she just went with a more generic kind of guest room um, for this buyer demographic uh, who knows it could be for older people I don't know uh, love this bathroom vignette if you need some good ideas um, these super easy way to set up a bathroom and have it look good and going back down to the kitchen again. This is the final photo. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now I'm thinking I might throw this into a um, live session. So if you're live, feel free to comment along the way. And thank you, Angie, again, for sharing this amazing work. Not surprising it sold in a bidding war. This is spectacular work that stagers all across the country are doing. I'm going to include um, a, a link to our directory. If you want a great stager like this who is well-trained, knows exactly what they're doing, eight steps in each room, go to that directory and find them. Um, thank you so much. 